Hey everybody, welcome back to Movie Feuds, the show that lets you decide some of the biggest debates in movie history. I'm Corey Williamson. And I'm Adam Mullinger. And we're live at the North Pole where we're going to talk to... What the hell is that? It's, it's the, the Abominable! abominable. <laughs> Well, with Christmas right around the corner, we thought it was appropriate to review the 1964 classic, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. While it is a fantastic flick, it's not without its flaws, and you know, we're here today to obviously tear the shit out of the thing. But we should point out that uh, most of the flaws that we've noticed were because it was 1964, didn't have a lot to work with, and what they did work with, it True. worked pretty well. In 1964, we're talking about the Holocaust, we're talking about slavery, we're talking about women's, you know, not, not, not ability to vote. You I know mean, nothing about history. Not, it's 1960s. Everything I said sounded accurate. We're going to go with it. I don't think so. Well, the film starts off in black and white, and there's kind of a blizzard, maybe the yeah. 30s time setting. It really throws you off because you don't really know what you're watching, and all of a sudden it cuts the opening credits of Rudolph. It always boggled my mind. I mean, they could have thrown Jimmy Smits in there at eating a Carl's Jr. double Who? cheeseburger in black and white. I mean, Jimmy Smits? He's an acclaimed actor. I mean, we're talking Dexter season three. He's in the new Star Wars movies. Wait, hold on, hold on. The, the new Star Wars movies, they're not Star Wars movies. They're sci-fi movies loosely based on the Star Wars stories. Okay, yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Well, now let me tell you about Rudolph. It all started a couple of years before the big snow. Film opens, narrated by a snowman with a pocket watch. We see our protagonist, Rudolph. I'm a proud papa. Nah, we'll, we'll call him Rudolph. Rudolph is a lovely name. The first time we see Rudolph, uh, it's with the Donner family, Papa Donner, probably one of the meanest characters in the show. Donner the douche. Now how can you overlook that? His beak blinks like a blinking beacon. In all reality, every adult in this thing is a prick. Yeah, when you've got the lead elf, the main guy, he sounds like Louis Black with his scratchy, over-the-top shouting voices. Donner's just constantly disappointed in his son. He doesn't give a shit about his red nose. He tries to cover it with mud. Come here, boy. You'll be a normal little buck just like everybody else, right? A chip off the old antlers. He's gonna learn a lesson later. He does. I think we all do. Well, everybody knows the story of Rudolph's red-nosed reindeer. He's got the shiny red nose. He tries to go and play his reindeer games, not starring Ben Affleck. Coach tells him to go fly himself somewhere else. That's right, and so he takes off a little journey of his own, where he uh, meets his elf misfit friend, Hermie, the homosexual dentist. Since we're talking about characters, let's get to the bulk of it. That's Yukon Cornelius. This guy's the show. He saves the day, saves everybody. That's right. And in my opinion, this, this whole thing should have been about him. It, it really should have just been called The Cornelius Story, How Yukon Cornelius Saved Christmas. Featuring Rudolph and a gay dentist friend. Speaking of saving the day, there's that scene in the cave where, you know, Rudolph is like fending off the family. What is Donner doing? He's just like pussed out in a corner watching his son get his ass handed to him. Yeah, and, and all of a sudden he just, you know, gets knocked out and Rudolph gets up and the abominable snowman's right there, but then Cornelius comes in and saves the day. Where's the Donner family? Where's Donner? This guy's like, the, oh, Rudolph, you're not a man. You know, you got a blinky nose. You're cowering in a corner crying. What are you doing, Donner? Where did you go, Donner? That's my boy. You know, one thing we should definitely point out is the special effects of this movie. I mean, for a film that's almost 50 years old, the claymation and the special effects are, are just awesome. It looks fantastic. That blizzard scene alone is worth the price of admission. You got roofs flying around, animals getting covered with snow. It's perfect. Things 
things get a little murky about the halfway point in this thing when we are introduced to the misfit toys on their little island. Yeah, I kind of feel like they took a little of inspiration from, what, the 1936 or 38 film uh, Wizard of Oz, where you kind of see some different characters. You've got the big, like, kind of castle princess kind of scenario. What was going on in the 30s? I'm trying to f place it. I mean, There's, like, Pearl Harbor. There was the fall of the Berlin Wall. Where, where, where are you right now? Here's a head scratcher. Why are some of these toys even considered misfits? I mean, you got a doll who's seemingly normal. A Charlie in the box? I mean, is the name the issue? Fun fact about the misfit toys, the uh, doll, later the director said the reason she was a misfit is because she was emotionally unstable. She felt that she could never be loved. What? Yeah. Do the kids talk to the toys when they get them? Hey, what's wrong, Mr. Choo Choo? I cut myself at night. Come on. Can the toys leave the island? I mean, they're just kind of like putting all of this on Rudolph and Cornelius. They, and they the can't. They need, they need to be saved from the island. Okay. Yeah, they're stuck on the island. No child wants to play with a Charlie in the box, so I had to come here. Where's here? Well, this is definitely one of those films that you never want to see recreated as an instant oh, yeah. classic. But if they did, it would save you a little bit of the headaches that come from the fax machine sound when <sighs> Rudolph's nose starts lighting it's like up. a crushing grenade in my ears, blood out the side. And some of the voice acting, obviously, as we pointed out, it can be improved. But for 1964, it holds up pretty well. You gotta take the good with the bad. I mean, we're talking about an era where you had 9-11, Hurricane Katrina. I mean, there's earthquakes in Japan. Those I mean, are very recent events. Just stop. I honestly think I'm right. But we'll move on. We're ragging, the, we're ragging on this thing like crazy, but it's all in good holiday fun. Uh, end of the day, you're, it's a phenomenal film. Uh, great CGI, like you said. Even better musical numbers. Uh, Silver and Gold is amongst my favorite. Obviously, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is a yeah. class. Short for classic. Was that necessary? No, it never is. Well, we definitely enjoyed this film, and you know, it's only about an hour long, so it's yeah. easy to really watch on TV or something. It's but one of my top five Christmas movies of all time. I can't speak for Corey, but I'd like to say that. Just please don't. All right. But we want to hear from you, so let us know what you thought about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Take a look at our Facebook page at facebook.com slash moviefeuds, or comment on the show page at moviefeuds.com. Boom. And you know, can I just end by saying, in a year like 1964, when you had the assassination of MLK, short for Martin Luther King, uh, you know, man walking on the moon, Buzz Lightyear. Uh, just with all this going on. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. Why am I even doing another season with you? I honestly don't understand what I'm doing wrong right now. Peppermint! What I've been searching for all my life! I've struck it rich! I've got me a peppermint mine! Wahoo! Well, everybody knows the story of the... <laughs> That's trying to go over the top there. Well, we definitely enjoyed this film, and, you know, right around the hour mark, at the length, anybody can really watch, anybody can watch it. You know, it's not too long for the old people.